Hello everybody, Backyard Bullying here. So today I'm coming to you from my silver pouring area rather than the table and that's because I've got some brand new moulds to share with you guys. So I've picked these up from a company called Technical Supermarket. I'll put a link in the description below but I've talked about them before. They're the suppliers of my kiln and uh, continuing to supply my graphite crucibles and things like that as well. So, But they do have a uh, graphite mould making facility. Uh, I say facility, capability, and they've got a little spreadsheet which you can download and you can kind of program in the, the widths, you know, depths and lengths and everything and you can see what kind of weight of silver, gold or other metals that you want to pour into them will hold. So I've aimed for 10 ounces on these two, we've got a big round and a big square uh, to kind of go in the whole collection of big bars, we've got now the big uh, regular bars, the big Kit Kat bars, and then these two big shapes as well. Talking of the big bars, we've got these two big 10 ounce bars, or ones just under 10 ounce, that I showed last week. Uh, now these are actually still available because the customer that was having a think about them has decided to go with something else. So if they tickled your fancy last week and you're still interested in them, then please do get in touch. You can go check them out on my website or you can just drop me a comment here and we can link up and we can sort something out. Um, but they're really, really cool. This one here is my favourite. It's 10 ounces exactly and it's got this really awesome elongated ripple lines and then we've got this one here which has got the amazing sort of teardrop shaped pear shaped ripple lines uh, and this one came out to just under 10 ounces at 9.83 so yeah if you're interested in those then please do get in touch also you'll notice this other tiny little mold here this one's a kind of one ounce half ounce button mold and uh, I've got plans for this for another day because this is um, need, this needs the small kiln I can't do the big kiln into this one but I'm, tr I'm thinking about making kind of a backgammon set or a uh, checkers set or something so uh, Plans for that another day. Also, one last thing to tell you about, and that's kind of Christmas presents. So I'm going to be pouring some big hearts today, and I'm actually going to be making them into mirrored hearts, which is going to play havoc on my fingers, getting loads of lovely blisters. But they seem to be very popular, certainly the big hearts this year for Christmas. Now, I'm not going to show those pours today, because those are going to be made into kind of special making of videos for, this, uh, for these Silver Forum members' Christmas presents. If you want to have something like that custom-made and have it hallmarked, then I need to, and in time for Christmas, then I need to know pretty sharpish because uh, time is running out to get it all hallmarked and back and then posted internationally as well. So if you're in the UK or Europe, there's two deadlines really that you can go for. You can go for either this coming Friday, which is Friday the 9th of November, or you can go for Friday the 24th of November, then I'll have everything hallmarked and it'll all be back in time to be posted to you for Christmas. Now, if you're outside of Europe, you're probably going to have to aim for that first deadline if you want it guaranteed before Christmas, uh, otherwise it might just be cutting it a bit too fine. But yeah, do get in touch. We, you know, I can do anything really. I can do stars. You've seen some of the stars I've done. These are the big spinning stars, but you can do some of the big pieces. Uh, you know, it can be anything really. I've had somebody request leaves, pirate rounds, you know, just if you want something that I haven't got listed on my website, just let me know and I can make them for you. So the silver is heating up. We're at about a thousand degrees already. Uh, and so I'm looking for that magic 1100 and then we can start pouring. Uh, so I'll be back in a moment when everything's up to temperature. Okay guys, and we're back, and um, gosh, do you know what, it's like a Sunday morning here, and it is so dark and dank and horrible outside. I've had to, have to turn the light on to actually get any kind of vision on the camera here. So anyway, silver is pretty much up to temperature. I've been heating the mould already. I'm just going to get the blowtorch back on because that's how I create my lovely ripples with the blowtorch. But what I do is I turn it down so that we've just got a, a gentle flame. So getting a lot of heat in the mould is good because it helps it kind of, you know, settle in the base of the mould a lot better and you tend to avoid air pockets and things like that. But having the nice, um, you know, low heat blowtorch coming sort of wherever you like, you can put it uh, pretty much, you know, any part of the uh, the mould you like. Anyway, so this, this big round is the first one. Uh, wish me luck. I hope it'll turn out all right. Otherwise, uh, we'll have to do it again and try another one. It's always a little bit um, of the unknown when you're pouring silver for the very first time into a new mould. You don't quite know how it's going to work, whether it's going to take properly, whether you're going to get nice ripples and everything. Uh, so we shall see. Let's give it a go. Silver is all hot. There we go. So let's turn the blowtorch off and get this out and have a look. I have no idea how much weight was in there, 
Um, gosh, it's so heavy. Oh, there we go. No idea how much weight was in that uh, crucible, but uh, it feels pretty heavy. Feels like it's going to be close to 10 ounces, if not exactly 10 ounces. Oh, that's nice. Look at this. Look at the size of that. That's brilliant. Pick it up now. This is always the difficult bit, trying to balance around. There we go. And then here's the quench. Love a little bit of quenching noise. Right then. Gosh, that's heated up the water quite a lot. Here we go. So we have, let's just give it a quick dry. We have a giant, chunky, chunky monkey ripple round. That's pretty cool. I think I can. I think I can do better though. This this all will clean off. I'll get that all cleaned up, and we'll have a look at that a little bit later. But the base has come out really smooth, really nice. Got some good heat into that graphite mold. So yeah, let's do some more, and then we'll come back. I'll just put some more silver in. It'll be another 20, 25 minutes from my end, but just a few seconds from your end. Okay guys, so silver is coming up to temperature and then we're going to pour the second round. But whilst we were waiting for that, I've gone and cleaned the first round. So here it is, uh, and you can see that it's got some really cool ripple lines. But uh, we did see all of that kind of pollution on the top of the round when it first came out. And now I think that's to do with what I used to pour it with. So I was melting down old pieces which I've done where things have not gone quite so well. Like I misstamped uh, this pirate ripple round uh, or it just wasn't a very nice piece and I've hammered them down to fit back in the crucible. But I've noticed that when, you, when I use stuff like that, it doesn't necessarily pour quite as smoothly and settle as smoothly as silver shot. Uh, so that's what I think has happened here. So I've exclusively used shot in the next crucible so hopefully when we pour this one we'll have a really really nice result uh, so just need a few more minutes to get silver up to temperature and then we'll be right back okie dokie silver is up to temperature mold is nice and hot blowtorch is ready so here we go wish me luck big round mark two So I think that's already miles better than the first one. We can see that the lines are a lot more subtle rather than the big kind of graphite pollution that we had the first time. So let's flip it out and quench it and then let's have a look. I think this one's slightly less heavy than the first one, but we'll see. Maybe it's about the same actually. Looks pretty, looks pretty similar, looks pretty thick. This is always the hardest bit. Ah, oh, there we go, got it. Who doesn't love the sound of quenching on a Sunday afternoon? How cool is that? Right, let's get this out of the water. Gosh, it makes the water very hot. Okay. Here we go. Gosh, it's still a bit hot actually. Let me uh, just cool it off a little bit more. There we go. Let's get that in focus. Very nice indeed. Lots of very cool ripples on there. I will give that a clean and then we'll have a look at that a bit later. There's some very interesting kind of almost like meteor strike craters in the middle of that. That's very, very cool indeed. Right, let's charge up the crucible once again and we'll get the big square poured next. Okay guys, time to pour the first square. Everything is nice and hot. Here we go. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Well, it's not cool, it's very, very hot, but it's a bit of a joke. Here we go. This is always the fun bit, trying to get it out of the mould. There we go. One thing I've noticed, these moulds are getting really nice backs. So, obviously I'm getting the temperature nice and hot. Ooh, 
which is really good. So let's have a look. Cool it off, it's still quite warm even after a quench. Leave that to one side. And here it is. So that is looking, I'm going to focus. That is looking pretty nice. Clean that up and stamp that up and we'll have a look at, uh, at that a bit later. I'm going to do one more big square uh, and maybe one more round and then we will call it a day and have a look and see what we've done. Okay guys, big square number two coming up. Uh, here we go. That's probably my best of the day so far, I think. I'm liking the way that that one's looking. So now, what a lot of people have requested in various videos before when I've done a bit of silver pouring is they want to see the quenching. So let's get this out the mould. Move the mould to one side. And we shall pick this up first. and we shall put it in the water on camera. So, I just use a little saucepan. I know that sounds a bit weird, um, but you know, this is a kitchen table business at the end of the day. Uh, so here it goes. Pretty cool process, very cool sounds. Heats the water up very well. I tell you, it's uh, probably not as efficient as heating it up with a kettle, but you know, that's the way it is. Right. I am going to pour a few other little bits and bobs that have been ordered by various customers, but I'll join you back on the table and we'll have a look at what I've poured today in a little bit more detail. So here we go, back on the table, uh, back to familiar territory, so to speak. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the ride along for the, uh, the silver pouring. It's not something I do very often. Obviously, sometimes I'll put just a, a nice pouring compilation together with uh, music in the background, but today I thought I'd bring you guys along to share with you the new moulds that I was getting and um, you know I'm quite happy with the way that everything has turned out. Uh, this was the very very first one that we did earlier and um, you know it came out with all of that kind of pollution on top and it's, it's quite interesting that the different type of silver that you use to uh, pour with whether it's you know big chunks before that's been melted down uh, or whether it was shot it does it does affect the way that the silver comes out but regardless it's very very pretty uh, however, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, you, you know, you guys have probably seen some of my other pieces and I know that I can do better, I mean look at that lovely bar uh, that I showed you earlier, so remember this bar is available, you know, and that's kind of, that's my barometer of success, you know, something like that, I put a lot of emphasis on trying to get something like that, or even, you know, with the, with the teardrop shaped uh, ripple lines as well, I really do try to measure myself against that. So. What I'm trying to say is this one is not perfect and also I kind of messed up the stamping. Um, so the one that came out to 11 ounces and the, the first one that I stamped, I stamped upside down, I wasn't concentrating. So what I did was I basically just covered it up by doing a really deep stamp for the 11. Uh, and then I used the small numbers as well and it's very big this round, that's the thing, you know, it looks a little bit small on here. So anyway, this is not perfect by any stretch. So I'm going to do a proper discounted price on this one. Uh, you know, it was the very first one I did, first big round I've ever done. Uh, so if you are interested in it and you want it, it's going to be on my website. It's going to be dirt cheap. Go on there, check it out. And if you're interested, please do purchase it. Um, however, the second round came out a lot better and I'm dead chuffed with the way this one came out. I'm really happy actually. It's very, very pretty indeed. Uh, I think there's still a little bit room for improvement. As we can see, there's something interesting happening here with some like almost like meteor craters hitting the silver but I'm still really happy with the way it turned out. And once again, like it's just really satisfying size and, and weight. So this one is 11 ounces. Uh, I've stamped it up number 212. As you can see, I didn't mess up the stamping this time. Um, and you know, I've used bigger, bigger letters and numbers, so I think it looks really good. Space for hallmarking, by the way. I didn't mention on this one as well. This can be hallmarked as well. Space for hallmarking underneath the BYB, uh, as will all of these bars. You know, There's gonna be room for hallmarking if somebody wants it. Um, so yeah, really very happy with that one. Again, that's on my website. Go check it out if you're interested. So then we moved over to the squares and here's the two squares. So the one on the left is the one I poured first and the one on the right is the one I poured second. And uh, you can see there's a difference between them. This one on the left, again, is a little bit rough and, uh, rough and ready around the edges. 
uh, and uh, you know it's got some of these interesting kind of pop marks and things on there. However, I'm still very happy with the way it's looked and, and you know it's coming out really well. And the size is great. You know these are very very chunky. Uh, they came out at 8.23 ounces and 9 ounces exactly. And when I say 9 ounces, this one was literally 9.002 ounces. So I am dead chuffed with the way that's happened. Um, so these are again stamped 213, 214 in the Ripple series. Um, very, very nice indeed. If you are interested in them, they are on my website. Uh, and just a reminder, these two big bars are still available. As I said at the start of the video, the customer that um, was considering them chose something else instead. So if you wanted those and you saw those last week, then please do go check them out. As I said, there's 10 ounce Troy on that one and 9.83 on that. So they're all on my website. You can go check them out at your leisure. So guys, if you like this video, if you like the ride along silver pouring, please do comment. Please do let me know because uh, I really, really want to make more of those type of vlog videos, but obviously only if you guys enjoy them, if you like them. I know these are a little bit longer, a long, little bit more long-winded than your usual kind of pouring compilation. Um, so I'll still probably be doing the pouring compilations, but I kind of like to do these and share, you know, share with you guys what I'm doing and, uh, and how I'm doing it. Otherwise, if you could just stick a thumbs up on the video, that would be very helpful if you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, next week, next Wednesday, I am releasing a video all about 2,000 subscribers and a giveaway, which I'm going to be arranging. Once again, 2,000 subs is on the horizon, so make sure if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button, hit the alarm bell. You'll get a notification next Wednesday when that video goes live. Otherwise, all that's left for me to say is I hope you guys have had a fantastic weekend and please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.